Welcome back. It's The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa, and we're back here to talk about breast cancer. Very important. And that's because October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, uh, an annual campaign that raises awareness about the impact of breast cancer. We'll just go straight to it uh, because we do not have so much time. We have a, a health expert who's with us this morning, Neso Chi uh, Ibokoi. She joins us all the way from New York. It's good to have you join us this morning. Pleasure to be with you. All right, then. Uh, can you quickly bring us up to speed with uh, the month of October and uh, the fact that uh, it has been designed, you know, to be a month for the campaign, raising awareness about breast cancer. Why and what should we know about, you know, this month? So the month of October is a key month that puts an emphasis and a focus on breast cancer awareness. Um, especially in a country like Nigeria, where a lot of cancers, especially breast cancers, are underdiagnosed, it's a time for us to make um, the public aware of exactly what breast cancer is and what some of these signs and symptoms that might manifest um, in any individual to look out for so that you know when it's time to go and see a doctor for an evaluation. So first and foremost, I think the general public need to understand what exactly is breast cancer. You have to have the fundamental knowledge first of what is a cancer in general. And in general, a cancer is an abnormal proliferation of damaged cells. So in our body, we all have these healthy cells. And over time, some of these cells can become damaged. When these damaged cells begin to grow rapidly out of control in various regions of the body, then it could manifest as a cancer. So when this process of abnormal cell growth of damaged cells occur in the breast, then one can have a breast cancer. It can start in one breast, it can start in both breasts, but the bottom line is there are these changes um, to the cells uh, in the breast manifesting as a potential tumor. With that said, the public needs to realize that breast cancer, the majority occur in women, but men can also um, obtain breast cancers as well. So I think the key thing is to recognize what breast cancer is and understand what your risk factor for developing breast cancer might be and what some of these signs and symptoms are. All right, so, so for those who, who um, uh, um, are watching and would like to know more about the risk factors and um, for the signs and symptoms, what do they need to look out for? Um, I'm, I'm particularly uh, um, interested also because we don't really talk about that much in the fact that men can also develop breast cancer, which is uh, quite surprising. So please throw some more light on, on the symptoms, the signs and, and risk factors. Okay, so in regards to um, signs and symptoms, there are a couple of these red flag signs that everyone really needs to know about um, to kind of sign and ring the bell that you need to see your doctor ASAP. So one thing that most people know about already is um, noticing a new lump in the breast. So most people know about this um, kind of sign or symptom of a new lump. That is a red flag sign to see a doctor. But other signs and symptoms include the following. Nipple discharge. Nipple discharge outside of normal lactation um, in a woman. So if you are a woman that is not breastfeeding and not lactating, you should not have nipple discharge. So if you do note that, that is a red flag sign that you should see a doctor. Um, another red flag sign may be um, thickening or swelling in part of the uh, breast, any skin area of the breast. Uh, the skin can potentially develop um, into um, what appears to be the skin of the orange, the way that the orange skin peel looks. It's what we call peau d'orange. Um, that is a red flag sign that you might need to see a doctor immediately. Something else to note, if you now notice a breast change, such as inversion of the nipple, that's another red flag sign that you need to see your doctor immediately. Uh, the bottom line is anytime you notice a change from your baseline, that's pretty much an indicator that you need to get checked out. So with all of these potential red flag signs, people need to also note that some of those symptoms that I mentioned can occur in other conditions. So that's why it's pretty much key that you talk to your doctor anytime you notice something outside of the ordinary of your baseline. 
Mm. All right. So quickly, uh, let's talk about the lump uh, for every time you probably have like that. Does it really mean that that's uh, a sign that you have cancer? So as I was saying, it's not necessarily a sign of cancer, but it could be any new lump or a lesion that develops in the body warrants a full evaluation. You would go to see your uh, physician, your doctor, and basically they can do certain tests. Um, if biopsy is warranted, they can test certain cells to determine is this something that's malignant? Is this something that's a cancer? Is this something that is benign? I think the key takeaway is when you notice a lump or a bump or, or a change, in this part of the body, it's not something to really sleep on. You need to get this checked out. It's not that it's necessarily going to be cancer, but if it were to be a cancer, detecting it earlier pretty much helps your um, outcome. It makes it better to easier, I should say, to treat when these things are diagnosed at earlier stages. All right. Uh, uh, in, in, in terms of having a, a mammogram, um, I mean, how, how often, you know, should, should, um, uh, should anyone have a mammogram? So in regards to um, the screening and mammography, first, the general public, you need to know when we're talking about mammography, this is just an x-ray of the breast. So we're visualizing that tissue to determine and detect if we're seeing any kind of abnormalities. So different regular, regulatory bodies have um, pretty much different, uh, potentially controversial guidelines about when we should initiate these discussions and these, um, this testing and screening, I should say, with um, mammography. So in general, starting from the age of 40, one should initiate these um, discussions with their physician. And around that age, starting at the age of 40, an annual mammography should ensue. Of course, there are various different factors that might change um, when you're going to initiate your mammogram, um, such as if you have a family history, which is a huge risk factor for um, development of breast cancer. So if one has a family history, meaning that you have a first degree um, relative, uh, mother, sibling with a uh, history of breast cancer, that magnifies and increases the risk that you can also develop breast cancer. So the screening for somebody with a family history would be earlier and sooner than the age of uh, 40. And in general, um, what you also need to know as well, in regards to these risk factors, there are certain risk factors that one can control to lower your risk of breast cancers. And there are certain factors that you cannot control um, that you have pretty much no control over. And I can go through those factors as well, because these are pretty key points that everyone should really be aware of. Okay, very quickly, please. Sure. So there are factors that you cannot control. Let's go through the factors that you can't control. You cannot control your gender, being born female. Of course, that increases the risk of um, obtaining uh, breast cancer because most of these cancers occur in women. Um, another factor that you can't control, your age, getting older. As we get older, the risk of breast cancer also increases. Um, other things that I also mentioned and alluded to, um, a family history. If you have a family history of a breast cancer, that increases your risk as well. If you've inherited certain gene mutations, so one of the most common gene mutations that one can inherit that can contribute to um, breast cancer is what we call a BRCA1, BRCA1, BRCA2 gene mutation. So those who have that kind of mutation, their risk um, is basically increased. And of course, well, Dr. Nesuchi, we, we have to let you go now. And that's because uh, we're out of time, but we appreciate your thoughts. Okay. And we look forward to speaking with you as we continue uh, in the month of October with the campaign, uh, you know, concerning breast cancer. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me on. All right, then. Dr. Neso Chi Okeke Bukoi is a health expert and she joins us all the way from the United States, uh, to be precise, New York. Thank you. Uh, we take a break now, and when we... Uh, um, no, yes. Not so necessarily not, a break, yeah, right? We'll have some other uh, <laughs> guests joining us to talk about a personal experience as far as... Uh, a cancer is concerned. It's um, it's very important, uh, you know, for people to be aware, messy, and to also have the information to go get checked. Like she's said, you know, once you get to the age of forty and a, 
above you need to make that check regularly but um mm. apart from that even i mean i see people young people these days having cancer babies having cancer so um if as she said if you notice anything mm. you know that looks strange on the breast you know you have to go check it out <laughs> definitely you know, but um, one, one one thing she said i never knew one of the things she that um, if you have any discharge when you're not lactating from the from the breast then it's a sign and i, I thought that was um you know, it's normal to have some sort of discharge even when you're not lactating. Oh, no, this is normal. You know, um, uh, don't ask me how I know. I, I research. <laughs> I, I research these things. All right, so, so I think I we... research these things. I'm a journalist, so I have to do some research. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. All right, uh, we, we have a, a, a next guest. Uh, Mercy, do us the honors, please. All right, so I think we have uh, Dennis Ejo. Dennis Ejo joins us this morning, and she'll be sharing her experience with us as a survivor of cancer. I hope I got that correctly. Good morning. Um, can you hear me? Yes, please. Okay, good morning. I didn't realize you were talking. Okay, good morning. Yes, you did share it correctly. That's my name, Denise Echo. All right, so, so um, Dennis, thank you for joining us once again. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's quickly um, hear you share your experience about, you know, cancer and surviving cancer. And also good to know that you are a CEO of a, a Commode Cancer Foundation in the United States. Okay, let me do some corrections now. I'm the CEO of Commode Cancer Foundation and we're based in Nigeria and we run a cancer awareness. Yes, thank you very much for inviting me and... Uh, it would be nice to talk about cancer. So let me talk about myself. But before I do that, I want to welcome all your viewers. And thank you. This is Breast Cancer Month. And currently, I am at the World Cancer Congress in Geneva. So we are, we are actually talking to you from there. All right. Let's go. Go on. Yeah, so go ahead. We'd like to hear your experience. Okay. I mean, how, I uh, how did it happen yes. and how did you survive it? I survived it. I'm still in it. So let's go. I was um, diagnosed with uh, breast cancer in 2016, uh, metastasizing in the brain, which basically means having breast cancer um, that has moved. Uh, so the tumors were found in the brain. I have had six, um, 12 tumors removed from my brain. I am in active treatment, so I still take chemo. I still go through radiotherapy. I still have um, all the all the things that come with a cancer treatment. So someone who's going through a cancer journey. Um, I live with the disease and it's called living with cancer, which means that they, they have not, they cannot actually say this is going to be the final solution and we've got a drug that's going to work. There is no miracle drug. As a drug stops working, um, they have to find another drug to fight that drug. So I was diagnosed with it in 2016 and I have lived with it ever since. It has had its own ups and downs. It has resulted in me having three brain surgeries that's, I mean, cuts to the brain, of which one of them, the last one was done in March of 2022. It has a lot of side effects for us. However, whatever, I, whatever goes on in the cancer space, I will always say to anybody, you've got to fight. You've got to believe in yourself. You've got to be focused on getting through it rather than seeing the negatives in what happens with it. So I've had to learn to go through it because it brings about the mental health challenges, um, the financial burdens that go with it for cancer patients. And it doesn't matter what part of the world you're from, no matter where you are, everybody that has cancer um, has those challenges, no matter what anybody thinks. Um, it is one of those times when I think I see the gratitude of God rather than the challenge in front because the surgeries have been very heart-wrenching, if that's the word to use, where you really go through a challenge and you don't know if you're going to come out of it. And that's what cancer is. You really don't know what your prognosis will bring to you, but you hope and you aim for getting through it and... That is by, by listening to your body. So if your body tells you you're tired, stop. If you've got a headache, you need to recognize there might be something wrong with you and, and follow it up. Cancer 
is one thing. The one thing I have learned from the diagnosis of cancer is knowing that if you have a persistent illness, a headache, a stomachache, anything that is persistent, anything, it is advised that you seek help because it means that there is something seriously wrong. Uh, if there was, um, I mean, I mean, for, for those who are living in Nigeria, uh, we know the access to the care, uh, adequate care is not um, as affordable as, as you, know, ish, you know, it is for other people around the world. Um, what are some of those things that you've noticed need to, in, and you say need to be done to, to make it uh, easier for people to screen and to also uh, take care of themselves so they can, uh, you know, be, be champions just like you are for, for, for this, this um, uh, you know, situation called cancer and also encourage other people as well? Uh, what, what needs to be done to make it easier for people to take care of themselves if they're diagnosed with cancer in Nigeria? Uh, first and foremost, I was diagnosed with cancer in Nigeria. Um, there are a lot of hospitals and there are a lot of NGOs in Nigeria, which one, ours is one of them, that actually support um, cancer patients. The biggest challenge we have is the, the fact that because cancer is stigmatized, Unfortunately, a lot of people will not come out and say it. But if we were able to all follow the rules and recognize when we are not in a good place and seek help then, then that is where it is easier to catch it at an early stage. Um, if you look at breast cancer, which is one of the things, one of my two that I have, um, breast cancer in the early stages, if found early, is like almost to be said to be curable. Um, and that is to a lot of cancers. If it's found very early, it is curable. However, when it gets to um, um, stages where it has moved and metastasized, um, that's where it becomes complex. So when I say to, if I'm saying to anybody, irrespective of where you are in the world, and Nigeria is not the only low-income country in the world, um, we all have to take responsibility. When you see a family member or a friend who is saying, I've got a running stomach and it doesn't go. There is a problem and it's, it's best for us to address that problem and force the medical team to investigate rather than a doctor telling you, oh no, take this medicine and go away. Because that's what happened to me. I, I went to six hospitals in Nigeria, in, that's in Abuja, Lagos and Mina. And everybody just dismissed it as a headache until I did a scan in a hospital in Lagos and they said, the, the, the tumors had moved. And I now had not one, but I had three. So it's important for us to recognize what I know now, if I had known then, I may not have, I may have addressed it differently. So anything that is persistent, and I'm not saying a headache, very com cancer is, is everyday disease. So it's, it's, it affects everybody every day. And it's just knowing that once one is, is um, uh, what do you call it, if it's persistent, all right. Go and seek help. Seek help. All right. Uh, very quickly, we, because of time, for those who would like to reach out to your foundation, I mean, with uh, personal questions and maybe they need some support, how can they do that? They should go on to Nigerian Cancer Society. Look for them on the website. Okay. Uh, on the on the on the on the on the uh, web, yeah on the website. Nigerian Cancer Society has the registered um, um, records of all cancer organizations in Nigeria. And every cancer organization specializes in very different things. So it's to find what is most applicable to you and use it. We are Comod Cancer Foundation and we create awareness. So we are trying to stop people from getting the disease. We want you to understand that these are the signs, these are what you need to do, and these are how to navigate um, your journey. Right. Um, no matter what it is. Okay, it's quite quite inspirational each time we we get to talk to you because because I mean living with one cancer is is a, is a tough one, but living with two uh, is, is 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 quite quite uh, heroic what you you're doing. And uh, also, I must thank you and commend you for coming out to say you want to use your experience to inform, educate, and enlighten others. I think that's admirable. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Well, that's it. Thank you so much uh, for being part of the show this morning, Dennis Ejor. Uh, we appreciate your time and we look forward to sharing more of your thoughts as we proceed in the month of uh, cancer or breast cancer awareness. And that's the size of our conversation this morning. If you missed out on any part of it, it would be great uh, to follow us on Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, and do subscribe to our YouTube channel. 
is at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. My name is Messia Bopo. Have a great morning. And yeah, my name is Kofi Bertels. Please uh, make sure you use all the information we've shared on the program today uh, for your benefit. See you tomorrow. Good morning.